in Santa Barbara, California. Yes, this is the show where Full Reef Stars International shine. It's for entrepreneurs in the entertainment field. And tonight we have some great guests for you. So keep tuned. Here we go at the Dream Machine USA. Telling you, lift your glasses, get all your hors d'oeuvres ready because we're going to have fun tonight. You're at the Dream Machine USA at ABG Studios and our TV studios, Mini Woodstock Festival. So join us. Have fun tonight. We've got some great guests for you. Yay! Keep tuned, everybody. Lucy Looker here, very excited to report on the Four Reef Stars International. I introduce you to Avia Bell Moon, a beautiful name. Okay. And uh, so, Avia, I would really enjoy it if you could tell all our viewers exactly, you know, all about your life. I know you've been to many different countries and you also were in Japan for a long time. Um, and as we can see on the table, we have two of your books and this is another one of your books. So I really want you to tell us, you know, your story. How did you decide to be an entrepreneur and be an independent author and all your dreams? Thank you so, so much. Uh, I've always wanted to be a writer. I've always wanted to write since I was a child, actually. Um, ever since, you know, I, I was a reader when I was a child. I used to go to the library and check out 10 or 20 books, and that was just my joy, going into my room and reading and just reading uh, any, anything you can imagine. You know, some favorite books were the, the Phantom Tollbo the Phantom Toll Booth, sorry. Ooh. That's one of my favorites, and um, Willy Wonka, oh. and, and uh, you know, of course, it, it's still being read now, but Ramona the Pest, all of those wonderful books, and uh, I remember going to the author go-round, you know, here, actually, that was uh, locally in the Central Coast when oh, I was living here. Oh, could you explain here. a little bit about that? You said it's an author go-round? The author go-round is something they have every year, and it's for children um, at, the, all, at the elementary schools, and maybe, I'm sure, I think it is, I think it's just elementary, but authors, children's authors come, and they talk to the, to the children um, about their books, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful program, and I remember clearly going to that and I think that kind of inspired me to also be an author wow. and um, you know just ever since I've, I've been a child I've, I've loved reading and at, at some point then I decided that I wanted to be a writer and when I was in high school I wrote for the, uh, the, um, the, the high school magazine and oh. the newspaper and I was on the newspaper staff and um, it, in my late 20s I went to Japan and that was when I decided I was going to write a novel it's exciting that you tell me that you were actually on a magazine because, and you, you know, started your career that way. Because Lucy Looker, as everybody knows, I'm the reporter for the Four Reef Stars International. And that's exactly how I felt. I was with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation in wow. Australia, and I was a part of the social club. And I brought out Lucy Looker as one, as my persona to write. And... So I know that feeling of being able to put words on print and actually put your feelings out there and be right. somebody else. Right, okay. So we have that in common then. Yes, yeah. and so Avia Bell Moon is your writing persona? Yes, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Uh, it's just uh, another, another, I think, you know, we have, people have multifaceted personalities. I don't believe that we're even... 
I don't know if I could put it in a way where it would be, I don't even believe we're, ha we're many different souls and many different people and personas in one person. It's not like a I Sybil agree. thing when you have those multiple personalities, but I'm saying I think we have many lifetimes in one lifetime. It's hard to explain. Just like referring to my, this book, A Thousand Years of Love, this book here, which I'm sorry I forgot to bring actually, but um, there's the cover there. I began writing that in 1999, well, I'm sorry, 1998 in Japan. And it was almost a thousand years ago that a woman named Murasaki Shikibu wrote a very similar book called Tale of Genji. And uh, it's interesting because I almost felt like I was reliving a past life in Japan when I was writing that book in this lifetime. And I think it's just so fascinating and I never thought I would go to Japan and write a book about the Heian period, but it's like I just, around that time I became very interested in and also like obsessed with it, that period. And I really, f I know that I was there like a thousand years ago living this lifetime in, in Kyoto, Japan and ancient Japan and China. And it's almost like I was reliving it then, you it's know. A very that's what I. It's exciting book because I have, um, as a, I've dabbled into all of your books and yes, I've read you. all parts of your book and got involved in it, and then I go back and read some more, and and it's they're very exciting books that, that you write. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, and that's why probably you feel that you are many personas or, or many many characters because I too feel that way because mm -hmm. not only am I Lucy Looker, the reporter for Four Eve Stars, but you all know that I am Ravel, the singer, songwriter, and I play Tutu for the young children. <laughs> yes. Saying, yes, I have all these characters and people and I feel like I've lived many lifetimes and I agree. I think that many of us feel that because when we meet somebody, sometimes it's like, oh, what is deja vu? other than maybe at a previous lifetime, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, so it's, yes, a, it's a very it's exciting very complex. life to be able to go, okay, I need to go all the way to Japan and have this feeling of writing a book. I mean, mm -hmm. tell us more about that. It sounds exciting. It wasn't like I, I felt I need to go to Japan. It's just something, your, your life is just a journey and it just happened. And uh, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't planning on writing a book about the Heian period. I, I know I had a fascination with Japanese art and culture. And so it came about naturally and, and just sort of a, a real a, sort of a addiction to beauty, you know. And so Japan is such a beautiful country and beautiful culture. And real, real strong affinity to Japan and to Asia in general. Right. But, um, you know, it just the whole process came about naturally of me writing the book and, and being so, I feel that to produce a work of art, you, you know, you really need to be uh, obsessed with it to the point where that obsession will sustain you in the process from beginning to end, you know, sustain you in that creative process from beginning to end, because it's not easy mm -hmm. to come up with, you know, the ideas and then do the research of this book took five years. Uh, and I think I've, you know, I, I've su succeeded in presenting that, that world, that Heian world um, is such a unique and beautiful world and that was my, my goal. And, um, and then with the second book here is written in modern, it was set in modern Japan and that kind of explores the, you know, the, the, the psychological, I don't know, parts of Japan or, or the consciousness that's there. This is just, this is the, the that's called Temple of the Dueling Heart. Yes, I know. And, I, I, um, I, that was a fascinating book. Yes. <laughs> Definitely um, had um, lots going on. It, all of you out there, I do believe that you can get these books online. Yes, yes, you can get these two available as e-books. Actually, Temple of the Dueling Heart and A Thousand Years of Love are available as e-books on Amazon. Um, and so ready for download. Also, you know, available in paper book, uh, paperback from Trafford. And, um, you know, this book here, if you look at the cover, it's uh, actually Rorschach Art, Temple of the Dueling Heart. Um, and, you know, if you're fami familiar with the Rorschach, the Rorschach test, it's a psychological test that is given to people. And there's also an art form called Rorschach. And so it was just sort of, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, when you're writing, you're just sort of mining your consciousness and, and accessing those deeper, le deeper levels and going deeper and deeper. And um, that's why art and psychology is just so, you know, so, so, um, so related it and is. it's just, it's really fascinating. And so kind of a catharsis of my, my time there, stay in Japan in, in, on, on, one, on one level. Um, Can you and, just tell the folks too, um, you are on Facebook. Yes. So could you give them the, the, the Facebook and the emails and 
if you have any phone numbers, if you could just tell the viewers so that they can go and get a book. Because I know many times with authors, um, you know, it's like, yes, you can get my book, and then you go to Borders or you go, well, Borders is closed locally, but I mean, if you go to any of the bookstores, sometimes you can't find them. So it's absolutely where can true. they actually, you know, can you give them the link? Can you speak? Well, to you know, the best, the best way, uh, I mean, if you're, uh, the best ways to get the books on Amazon, if you're not here locally in Santa Barbara, if you're here local in, in the living in Santa Barbara, uh, they're at Curious Cup in Carpinteria. Um, I believe the Tecolote in Montecito has two copies of my, my, my latest book, Spirit Land. And then, uh, but you can buy these two books on Amazon, available in paperback or as uh, ebook download. And and hopefully this uh, Spirit Land will also be available as ebook soon. It's a little bit more complex, but um, or you can you know contact me directly at book sales at aviabelmoon.com. That's aviabelmoon.com. Uh, and I'm on Facebook. Just Google aviabelmoon.com. You know, send me a friend request. I'm very open and. Um, and uh, the last book, Spirit Land, is uh, something just, uh, who, who thought I would write a book on ghosts, you know? <laughs> ghosts, I think that's interesting. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, I returned to Santa Barbara in 19, oh, she went down like 2007, actually, no, 19, we're in the 21st century yes. here, 2007, and I lived in a haunted house, believe it or not. And that was just a whole other fascinating, uh, just departure now. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's, it, the artist's life is it's artistic journey, and we don't know where we're going to go. We don't know, you know, where, where, where we're going to end up. But I think that you should just let it happen, you know. And uh, I became very fascinated with the, with the paranormal and supernatural because I experienced such a, such a profound, had such a profound experience with the, actually the, the, you know, a ghost, of so, a few ghosts that were living in my house. And since then, other paranormal experiences. And I believe that because I have such a, I have somewhat of an open personality, that um, my spirit or my spirituality, my whole being is open to that, and so the go the spirits can sense that, and they're kind of you know like I hone in that on me. I've also I've I've experienced a, a lot of um, paranormal. I stuff know you mentioned that spiritual stuff, and the house that. Um, we had before is the Dream Machine, because you know this is the Dream Machine USA where we do the Mini with Stop Festival studio TV show. Um, we had the same thing on Garden Street, and where we lived on Garden Street in Santa Barbara, there was definitely ghosts. We met few, and in fact, some of the people that we, we loved that passed came through our house to tell us that they passed and then we found out later that they had passed. And they were, yeah. you know, people that, you know, actually it was a very, one of them was a very good friend of Dan's. And uh, yeah, so I definitely believe in ghosts. Um, it's not so, it's spirit. I mean, ghost is a funny word to right, use as, as right. a comedy or whatever, but right. really spirits. I think uh -huh, spirits yes. sometimes are a, a, a not at peace. I, and I they're think trying so. to tell us something. Mm -hmm. And rather than be scared of them, I really think we ought to communicate with them. That's why I feel That's exactly. And, and I feel that, um, you know, we should be compassionate to them as well. Definitely. You know, because some of them, this particular spirit that was living in the house that I, where I was staying, this, this ghost, it was a child, and um, he was stuck, you know, because he had no one to listen to his story. And it was just absolutely fascinating. And that, that whole experience led me to believe that, oh my gosh, well, there's so much we don't know, you know, that life is truly eternal, and where do we go after we, we die, and this whole, you know, became a continuation of this artistic journey, and it led me also, now I'm writing a screenplay. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and I'm very interested in film, I just think film is the ultimate medium, and in in, you know, I just really, I, my goal now is to actually make a film, and uh, it will have some paranormal elements, um, and uh, I, I'm just really excited about this, but it's really been quite a challenge to produce a screenplay. I think even, you know, more difficult in some ways than writing a book. With writing a book, you can kind of fall back on description um, and whatnot, but with a screenplay, you really, you've got to have such a good sense of dialogue and structure. And, uh, but I think it's, it's the ultimate for me to really, you know, produce a film and, and working with people that are so, you know, that would be totally engaged and passionate about the subject 
and you know having all those different artistic elements involved you've got the writing you've got photography and you have music and i would just you know for me if i can produce a fantastic film maybe a few films before i i you know pass on to the next <laughs> life or whatever that would just be really a fantastic dream yes. and i think i have many dreams and that's one of them tell me a little bit about your family so your your, you have how many siblings? I have a younger sister and I have an older brother. Oh, right. Yes. And are they around this area? Yeah, yeah, they're in this area. My brother actually lives in L.A. He has also written a book as well. My goodness, yeah. it's in your family all Yeah, we have sort of a writer's family, I guess, as far as the kids go. But um, he uh, has written a book. It's called Fifi, and it's about um, a, a girl that, uh, from Idaho who goes to Hollywood and lives out her dreams oh, as a Hollywood goodness. actress. So he has a passion as well. So, so many writers, you know, have a passion as well to, to uh, you know, take their books and create films. But um, it's it's quite a journey, and it, it financially as well. A lot of people are just producing, you know, using their own money to pr produce yes, films. Yes, they are. So, um, but uh, you have that creative control, and and of course, the ultimate would be to work with a you know a big studio that will give you that creative control and also you know respect your your creativity and. I'd like to thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you, you know, really, give, give me yeah. a hug. And um, yeah, it was lovely having yeah, you. Thank you at so Penny much. Woodstock Festival. I hope that next year, when this film, you know, takes yeah. a hold, or whenever you would like to come back, oh, and I would love tell that. us what you've been doing, you know, with your writing career, you know, Absolutely. as an entrepreneur, as an independent writer. So please, you know, I do hope you will come back. That will be great. And we'll really look forward to seeing oh, you. Oh, thank you. So, and good luck to you too. Yeah, Absolutely. cheers to cheers. that. Cheers. Yes. And um, cheers to artistic success. Definitely. Success. And thank you so much for coming to us. And uh, oh, you know what? I think it's tutu time. Oh. So don't leave your sets. Don't leave the house because Tutu is going to come and visit you guys. Thanks for listening to and watching 4 Eve Stars International reporter Lucy Looker. Take Thank care you. now. Bye-bye. Oh, I just received a text. Oh my goodness, you got me with my hair all in rollers. Anyway, I'm excited because tutu time is about to happen, everybody. So all the boys and girls, get ready because we have two wonderful stars coming to tutu time today. All right, now I'm going to go get ready. Bye, see you at tutu time. It's tutu time. It's tutu time. Tell me your goals, tell me your dreams, tutu time. Tell me your goals, tell me your dreams at tutu time. It's tutu time and she loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tutu time and she loves you. Yeah. Tell me your goals, tell me your dreams. You're the young stars of Farid. Tutu time, tutu time. guest with me today. You're going to love this guy. He's got two other brothers just like himself. Yes, it's one of the Metcalf triplets. Uh, Kelly and Tim's Metcalf triplets. Skylar's brother. And we've got Jack with us. Hello, Jack. Hello. Hello. And Jack, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you've been in some movies and you've been on a few different shows since you were 18 months old because Tutu looked after you since you were almost born, right? You were about two months old when I looked after you. Started taking care of your brothers and your sister. And you started acting way back then in movies. Amazing, guys. I mean, he's been on, you know, the, the triplets have been on so many shows. And it's very, very exciting. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the last one you did when you went to do the filming of it. What was that one called? Do you remember? Uh, yeah. What was it called? Plush. Rush. Rush? No, plush. Plush. Yeah. Plush. And is that, is, is, that's on, um, I think it's on one of the Showtime channels later on, isn't it? Some movie. But you were also on um, This Is 40, weren't you? Yeah. That was a good movie, I guess, because the three of you played together, right? Yeah, but, but I did most of the work. You did most of the work, yeah? Well, not the movie work, but... But I did the like, 
helping like like helping Corey fixing the alleys and stuff. Oh, so they had to. Oh, that was part of your um, stage work that you were doing to help the film work. Yeah. Wow. You, yeah. Well, you're really. He's like they're like veterans now in the movie world. So anyway, tell us a little bit about um, your school life because you go to Kellogg School, right now? Yeah. I miss you guys. Remember the fun we used to have at Kellogg when everybody was at school and we used to walk to the park. Well, and in we used summer, to ride your cars. in <laughs> summer we can do that. Oh, we can do it again. It would be so great. We, I would love to see you again in the summer. So Jack, tell us a little bit about school. Did you like? Do you like Kellogg School? Because you're in what? Yeah. What year are you in right now? Uh. Are you in kindergarten right now? Yeah. Okay, so next year you'll go to? First grade. First grade. So what is it you like about Kellogg School? Uh, it's, well, why I like it is, is because it has funner toys than preschool. Oh, it has funner toys than preschool. Has lots better, a lot of better, lots better. It has a lot better toys than, than preschool. Is that what you mean? Yeah. They're, they're more fun, is what yeah. you're saying. I get it, I get it. And uh, do you have any favorite friends at Kellogg? Yeah, my favorite friend is Zachary, because we're both firefighters and in community. Oh. And I'm... we're playing community today. Oh, and can you tell us a little bit about community? Well, it is, well, it's very fun, because you get to make cars and stuff. Oh, you build your own cars for this? So it's yeah. like a town? So it's, it's like a community town that you, that you have in the classroom? Yeah. And oh, I get it. So each of you are different characters, like you're a fireman? Yeah. And Zachary's a fireman? Yeah. Oh, I see, so you put out fires. Yeah. <gasps> What's that like? Well, we get fire extinguishers and fire helmets and walkie-talkies, and that's just the things. Wow, that's incredible. And, and what is it you like? Do you like anything at the anything else at school, like any of the subjects that you have to learn, like maths and English, and do you have to do those things, like words and letters? Do you, do you like any of those, or do you just really like all the fun stuff? Well, I don't really like doing math. But you don't like math? But I don't really do English you don't in do kindergarten. English, right? No. But I taught you a lot of English, didn't I, when you guys were little? Yeah. Remember? Because <laughs> Tutu, yeah. Yeah, Tutu was born in England and raised in Australia. So you boys got to learn all about a lot of English words through me. Mm-hmm. So um, what, what's going on? So you're looking forward to summer, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Because I really want to play with Tutu. You really want to play with Tutu? Oh, I love it. Well, we're going to have to have some Tutu sleepovers. So, you bought, I see you bought your lu- ukulele, the one that Tutu has here at the, at the playhouse. And you love to play this since you were very little. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to give everybody a tune? Yep. All right, then. Off you go. Wait, which one was it? Hmm. Which one's the E chord again? Huh. Well, just guess. I bet you know which one it is. Maybe I'll test it. Test it. There you go. Here's a good one. That's a good one. Go for it, then, Jack. to everybody out there in TV land and tell them, say, you gonna, do you want to come back to Tutu time? Bye-bye. Do you want to come back to Tutu time? No, that's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you, do you want to come back to Tutu time? Right? <laughs> yeah. I love you, Jack. You're so cool. You're just too cool. Give me a high five, man. You're so cool. He's t- doing his lines. He's a movie star. you got to understand. He thinks I'm telling him he has his lines. So let's <laughs> say bye-bye from Tutu Time and tell him you'll see him again. 
Bye bye for Tutu Tribe. I'll tell you I see you again. We'll see you again. <laughs> bye. Hi, we're at Tutu Time and it's June. Yes, solstice month. My goodness. I hope everybody also wish their dads. Happy Father's Day this month, because it's June. Last month was Mother's Day, and this month it's June and Father's Day. Well, I have a wonderful guest with me today, and um, you all know Jose. Well, you remember he was talking about Samantha, Samantha Sander. Yes, I have Samantha with us today. Hi, Samantha. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Really well. And and you go to the you go to a different school to, than Jose, yes. though, right? What school do you go to? I Samantha? go to Dos Pablos. Dos Pablos. That's the one that I, Donna Rose and Arthur went exactly. to, and lots and lots of friends go to mm -hmm. that we know. And it's only just across the road from the Dream Machine USA, where we do all the filming of Two Two Time. Mm -hmm. So, Samantha, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am a sophomore that attends DP, and um, I play three sports now, softball, volleyball, and soccer. And um, other than that, I mean, I keep myself busy. Me and Jose have the business going, which is doing well. And other than that, I just do the sports, and yeah. So I, I know I was speaking to Jose, and he it's like he's doing really, really well. And he told me that um, basically you're his manager. <laughs> Samantha is his manager. I mean, you're probably... A fans of Jose's out there and you can start being a fan of Samantha. <laughs> Samantha and jo Jose have created a business called Euphoria. You may remember he, we actually saw his business cards. Anyway, Samantha, so everybody calls you or they call Jose and, and you have to, what is it you do as his manager? You set up times yeah. and stuff? Mainly I just, I get the calls from the people and we set up the times and places that we can meet and do our jobs well. It's progressively getting bigger, which is good. And um, Jose's been doing really well, keeping organized and getting all his work done. He's been he's juggling school and basketball and the job, so he's doing a great job. Well, that's amazing. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that, so we know that Samantha's a manager and, and um with Jose, so she's learning all about being an entrepreneur for the future. And but you are such a um, she's such a sportswoman. She loves to do lots of sports, but I do know that it can be dangerous, can't it? Yeah, I just recently actually got back from a concussion. I was out for like three or so weeks from sports, but I'm healthy now and I'm back at it. And our actually you for the no. so mum's a nurse. Yeah, Sophie but, and Buddy. That was a little bit scary, but it was probably my worst injury that I've actually ever gotten, which is really? kind of good, noting the fact that I've played so many sports. But, you know, it was a good experience. I'm now safer, which is good. But I know you've done some really amazing um, places. I mean, played amazing places. Like, I remember your parents said you went all the way to Las Vegas. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that yeah, trip. Yeah, we had a big tournament for my volleyball, for club volleyball, um, over in Las Vegas, and it was like around three days of just volleyball. It was super fun because you, your team all spends the nights in the same hotel and you bond and stuff, and it was a really great experience. And later on in June, we'll, um, we'll be traveling all the way to Florida, which is a really, it's pretty far. It's pretty expensive, but you know, it's definitely going to be a great experiences, and there's a whole bunch of scouts, so, you know, there's always the fact that you might be going to college with a scholarship or something like that, so it's like that extra ounce of motivation. Which is so good. is that something you would really like to do, sports, as a, as, as a way to earn a living, <laughs> <laughs> um, or just an extra thing? I think it's more of just an extra thing that I can do on top of my, like, maybe regular career, but, you know, it's more of a hobby. So life. what sort of things do you like in regards to um, going to school? I mean, with all your subjects and, and you know, you love your sports, yeah. but is there anything academically that you really like to do? Um, I'm leaning towards, uh, like, the sciences and stuff. I really, really? enjoy learning about that. Um, and my sister, she, her being becoming a doctor and everything has gotten me kind of, um, I kind of like the psychology part of that so I'm kind of leaning towards those two things maybe have a career rate later on in my life but yeah wow that's incredible so I guess um, you what you're in, you're a sophomore right now mm -hmm. right okay so have you had your school dance this year um yeah we've actually had I think three now 
Yeah, we had um, Homecoming, which is the one in the beginning of the year, Winter Formal, and then there was kind of like an end of the year one called MORP, which is just prom backwards to kind of, oh, for all the people that aren't seniors. <laughs> yeah, Morp, yeah. That's funny. So is that in December or is that in June? That Morp. one, that one just passed last month. So oh, so you just had yeah, MORP. Yeah, we just had it. There's a new thing out there, folks, MORP. Yeah. Yeah, not prom. It's more. <laughs> so anyway, I guess they want more of what they're having at prom, so they make up something <laughs> new called more. Yeah. Amazing. Well, Samantha, it's been really lovely having you on Two Two Time. Is there anything you'd like to tell? I think that if you would like to advertise, maybe Euphoria. Yeah. And tell them to give you a call so that you and Jose can have some more business. So tell everybody out there about Euphoria a little bit. It's a bit. great company and you know we can pretty much do anything that you really ask. We can walk the dogs, babysit, whatever jobs that you find yourself too busy to do we can help out with and you can either call me or Jose and we'll make set up a time and we'll figure it out. So give everybody your um, email address and also your phone number so okay. that they can get a hold of Samantha. You can call me at 805-451-446 seven six and um, you can email me at sam dot sander eight at gmail dot com. Great. We'll get back so one more time that's sam dot sander at eight at gmail dot com. Sam dot sander eight yeah. at gmail dot com. Got it. Okay, well let's say bye bye from Tutu Time and we'll thank you so much for coming on Tutu Time Samantha. Bye bye for now. Hi everybody! Well, this month I have a wonderful guest. But before I actually introduce you to my wonderful guest, I have some background to tell you. As you all know, I'm Ravel Orr now. But when I first came to Santa Barbara, I was Janet Foreman because I was married to Henry. And the exciting thing is, I started to do my auditions over here. And uh, I was at a place in Santa Barbara called Circle Bar B. Yes, and if Dan can actually zoom in on that, you'll see, and I'm sure many of you knew Barbara and Tom Zaya. I'm sure you did. Well, this is actually something that I was in. Uh, the first show I was in at the Circle Bar B was Charlie's Aunt. And any of you of my friends that know me will remember when I was in Charlie's Aunt. And check this picture out, Dan. It's like so cool. That one's Six Rooms Review. Oh, there's Charlie there. But this <laughs> picture is so cool. Look at this one here. Hang on. I don't know if it's too... I can't... Oh, here we go. See if I can lift this thing up. Whoops. There we go. Look at this. Here's Charlie's aunt's crew. Can you see it? Can you get into it, Dan? Great. This was the funnest show ever. It just brought the house down back then back in those days. It was hilarious. And um, anyway, there was that one and I was in Six Rooms Review. Apparently they thought that I could do a New York accent better than a Californian. So I ended up with, in this show, Six Rooms Review. Had a ball, Charlie's, uh, I mean Charlie's aunt. Had a ball at Circle Barbie. Had a ball at Charlie's aunt too. We had a blast. And any of you that know the Circle Barbie, it's been around so many donkeys years so many years. Um, it's fabulous. You know, you go out there and you have a great dinner and a great show. It is worth so much and it's a lot of fun. And as an ex-actress that was there performing, I can tell you, every time I go there now as season ticket holders, yes, Dan and I are season <laughs> ticket holders and we love it, uh, we just have a ball. I mean, if you really want to have a fun night out with your family, with your friends that are coming in from overseas, from local, birthday parties, oh my goodness, yes, and who owns it now? Yeah, who does the theatre now? Who does all those productions now? And they direct and they act and they give you a blast. Yes, it's Susie and Dave Crouch. And I'm telling you, they are a lot of fun. So I'm going to introduce you to Susie because she's so wonderful and she makes you feel at home. When you're there, it's like you've just come out of your own house and you go back into another house. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Susie. Hi, Susie. Here Hello, Ravel. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. And I'm so happy. Susie's very, very busy, as you can imagine. She's an actress, she's a director, she's a producer out at Circle Bar B, and they've just finished one, se one part of the season. There's like four shows a year, mm -hmm. and they just finished that really, uh, the 
what was it called again? Return engagements. There was. They've just finished return engagements. Oh my gosh, the actors were fantastic. Really funny. That's a good show. Uh, yeah, it was. A, it was a funny show. And I love the part that you were coming on to. She, the maid. Yeah, she comes on and it's great. I mean, it's really stage crew and she just acts as the maid, changing everything. And it's so wonderful. And you're so close at the Circle Bar B in the theatre. It's almost like you can touch the actors and it's exciting. So I'm going to introduce you to Susie again and let her tell you all about herself because she's our star tonight. And uh, it's exciting. So Susie, what made you um, obviously take it over from, because is Barbara and Tom passed now or? Uh, Have they Barbara retired. Ha I, I, Barbara Zire has passed away, and I think Tom Zire has as well. Oh I'm, I'm my not goodness. sure. Well, they did a wonderful job out of the Circle Barbie for so long. They did, and actually, though, the Circle Barbie was started by Janet and Ruben Caballero. That's right. Yeah, That's right. I think it was in an. Maybe I came along. I I acted out there in 1979, 80, around about that time, and I. Th Remember that name, Janet. Janet and Ruben started the theater in 1971. Okay, so okay. This is our 43rd season wow. at the Circle Barbie, which is pretty incredible. Oh, 43 years. Um, and then they left for a while, and oh, they went to San, they went into Santa Barbara and tried a couple of venues there, and that's when the Zires took over. So okay. the Zires were there for I think about three or four years, and then they ended up leaving, and the Caballeros came back and had it all the way up until 2003, we took it over in 2004. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I thought they, so Tom and Barbara only had it for, a, they must very have just had time. it when I was there. Then. They had it for a very short time. Yeah. It's amazing though how many people talk about the Zires in terms of being actors and, and being affiliated yes. with the Zires. So they, they may have only been there a short time, but they definitely made an impression. Oh, they. I just really enjoyed working out there. So tell us a bit about you. I want to know, so are you from Santa Barbara? No. No. Okay, so tell us your no. story. Where were you born? Family, and how did you end up here doing this? I, uh, I, it's a very, it's kind of a weird, strange, roundabout sort of background. I actually grew up uh, in Southern California. I grew up in uh, a town in the San Gabriel Valley called Arcadia, Arcadia, oh, okay. uh, and Laguna Beach. Oh, so nice. that's sort of where I grew up. Um, I actually uh, was in acting, mostly music though. I did a lot of music in high school. And I actually got a voice scholarship to USC. Oh. My husband ended up passing away. Oh. I met David Couch. Delivering singing telegrams. Oh, I did that. That's I did what, that in I Love Mr. Jens Grams. That, I used yeah. to do singing telegrams. He did singing telegrams for a while while he was oh. trying, you know, trying to get into the acting biz. It was pretty fun. And um, he had been an actor in Atlanta. Uh, he had done more camera work, uh, commercials, that kind of thing. He just sort of had started his acting career in his mid-30s. Um, and uh, so we came to Santa Barbara. My kids were very small. They were three and seven wow. when we got married. And so he's been their father for the whole time. Oh, wow. They he raised Isn't that my incredible? children. Yeah. Yeah, because when we first came to Santa Barbara, I was working retail and worked 24 hours a day. I mean, literally worked all day. He was their stay-at-home dad. He had a actor, Gary Lund. I don't know if you know him. You may oh, know him. Oh, Gary. Yeah. Oh, isn't he in look at this? Is oh, he, he's right oh there. God. There he is in Circle Bobby. Yes. Charlie's aunt. Yeah. No, maybe actually there he is. that. Here. Isn't that him here? That's probably him as a very young Gary Lund. And he Lund. was in Carpinteria. That's where he's, and he, and he lived in Carpinteria, I think, or Mesa. That is so funny. He's that's him, so right? young, I guess. Yeah, that's yes. Him, that's him. Yes. Gary. Well, he actually worked for me as my, he was oh. my uh, home furnishings man, I mean, my uh, men's furnishings manager at Robinson's. Oh, and that's a, that's, yes, I think he did work. He's yes. been there a long yeah. time, wasn't years, he? There? Years, years. Yes. Oh, Gary, oh my God, yes. Yes. We worked in Charlie's house together. So, that's um, crazy. and actually, is he still around? He's in Las Vegas. Oh, he went, oh He gosh, moved to yes. Las Vegas. That was um, his dream a long, 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 long time ago. And that's actually how Janet and Ruben ended up in Las Vegas, oh, was through Gary. Oh so that's how, yeah, that's how they ended up there. That's um, So, yes, yeah, so through Gary Lund, we oh. came to see him in a show. Um, at and I Circle don't, At Circle Barbie. Barbie. And I don't even remember what it was, but we were like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest place ever. We love this place. <laughs> we have to, so David said, <laughs> To Janet, Janet and Ruben Caballero had it at the time. Right, they right. were they were the producers. Yeah, they yeah they were all very close. I remember that. Da yeah, they were really close to, yes. to Gary. And so David said to Janet, "Well, I would love to audition. How do I get how do I get involved? How do I audition?" 
So he auditioned actually the following year for A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. When did you actually decide to actually take over the Circle Barbie then? I mean, because you, you, that's what you do. I mean, that's, right. that's well, we, what you do now. Uh, right. And um, we, we for, so for 10 years, we sort of did shows and we did. Um, I actually quit my big old huge job at Robinson's with my big old huge six figure oh, income. I understand. To become an actress at the Circle Barbie. I Barbie, understand. Which is pretty crazy. <laughs> yes, I understand. Went into the restaurant business because, you know, every starving actress has to work in the restaurant business. Right. But meantime, I had a huge mortgage and two children and a husband wow. to support. So that didn't work out very well. But anyway. <laughs> I know what you mean. That's we, independent artists. Folks. That's right. Entrepreneurs that's, that's in the independent happened. artist that's world. In the time of um, business. Knew what we wanted to do and... And really became... Extremely close to Janet and Ruben. They became our second family. Wow. They became our kids' grandparents. Oh, they retired. They said, Would you like to buy the business? We own the theater business. I missed how you got to Santa Barbara. You, uh, were, you I was got recruited, married. I was recruited by Robinsons oh, to come okay. here to manage their from Macy's? store. From Macy's. Okay, so that's what brought you into Santa yes. Barbara. And then yes. you raised your two boys in Santa Barbara. Correct. Okay, great. Yeah. They went to school wow, all the way through here. And story. they were also totally involved in the theater, I'm too. Sure. I mean, they were in no matter shows. matter what field you're in, if you have that performance within you, yeah. you'll do well. Absolutely. Because as you know, you know, you have to be yeah. a real good performer to sell. Right. <laughs> on stage. Everything's all on stage. Absolutely. And the thing is, I, I really believe that even with parents, I always as I told you, Tutu was is part of my life too. And she I always talk about my characters as different right. people within me. And she taught each child that she helped raise with the parents to be a performer. Yeah. And I would teach them how to be a performer because performance is the way to go in this world. Yeah. You know, as and and a real true actress, singer, entertainer is a performer. Yes. You know? Well, and it and only helps you in mom, later life. When you're a mum, do you have to perform or what? You have to think fast. Yeah. You have to you know, really be on it when you've got children because they're like your audience. Especially when you have boys. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I, mean, I raised three kids. I have raised triplet boys. Um, oh my gosh. Little, like, they're wow. little stars now. They're, in fact, they're on, gonna be, they're on tutu time too now. But um, yeah, they, they were in um, just recently, um, what is it called? Daddy's 40. This is 40? This Aren't is 40. Isn't that they're our neighbors? The triplets. Yeah. Yeah. Our neighbors. Our neighbors. That's neighbors. What's hilarious, folks. <laughs> Yeah, you live right, right next door. Neighbors. You live right, they were actually moving, but you live right next door to the Mexican yeah. triplets. That's interesting. Well, Susie, it's so lovely. I'm so happy. Thank you. you oh, such a busy schedule. You. Give me a hug, honey. Oh, my goodness. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yes. And thank you so much for coming and hearing all about you. And I'm excited. As I say, folks, if you want to be season ticket holders, just... Speak to Susie. Why don't give you give them? Yeah, give them a call. Why don't you tell them your phone number okay, and box. your um, like web email, website, email, and web. Okay. Tell them that. Uh, our phone number, our box office phone number is 805-967-1962. 805-967-1962. Um, our website is www.circlebarbtheater. T h e a t r e dot com. Uh, we do do four shows a year. We have three more to go. We open The Importance of Being Earnest on May 31st, and all of our shows are on our website. And when does The Importance of Being Earnest finish? July 14th. Okay, so you will get to see this show. Seven weeks. It runs seven weeks. Friday nights, okay. Saturday nights, and Sunday afternoon matinees. And tell them the rest of the shows for the year. We are doing, uh, our summer show is actually Ken Ludwig's Fox on the Fairway. Uh, it's his brand new farce. It's hilarious, funny, fast-paced, really a great show. And then we're closing the season with a show we have wanted to do forever. And I have no idea how we're going to do it on our little stage, but it's noises off. Wow. Uh, probably one of the, the best farces and best well-known farces ever written. So. We're pretty excited. It's going to be a pretty great season. That's cool. Well, okay, everybody. Um, we'll say bye-bye to you for now. And okay. hopefully maybe Dave will come on next time. Absolutely. We'll all about Dave. Give our love to Circle Barbie Theatre. Will. And we definitely will see you for the importance of being earnest. But I think there's a musician going to be coming up next. So don't adjust your TV sets. Stay on TVSB. Hi, everybody. Well, here we are at the Mini Woodstock Festival once again. And I have a wonderful artist tonight to introduce you all to from the U.S. bands, including Cooperative. I'm very excited. He's a guitarist, musician. His name is Doug Giordani. 
and he's from around here, which is so great, only up the road. So tell us all about it. Where were you born? You, you know, your whole okay, life. Okay, I was, I was born, music. I was born in Monrovia, California. Okay. In 1951. Okay, now we know his age. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Close yeah, to yeah, mine. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and my family lived in Baldwin Park for a couple years. Then we moved to West Covina. Oh, okay. And while we were there, my cousin, whose name is Gary Clark used to be on a show called The Virginian with James Drury and Lee J. Cobb. Wow. Okay, like kind of like a bonanza show. Okay. And he had a main part on it, but he was the least of all the parts, but he was a main character on the on the show. And he bought a house uh, above the Continental Hotel in Hollywood and at the top of the hill. Little teeny house, but it was a beautiful view. We used to go up and visit him. And when the Beatles came out in 1965, they asked him to house Paul and George. How wonderful is that? Oh my gosh! And so, <laughs> while they were there, and we were in West Covina, uh, you know, I'm like in my mid-teens at that point, yeah, right and th they, they called us up and said, hello guys, uh, this is your cousin, Gary, and, and uh, we've got Paul and George. So Paul got on the phone and says, oh, how you doing? You know, you know I mean, I, I, that's <laughs> you live in Liverpool, Glenn. Liverpool, I'm, 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 I'm a Californian, you know. Uh, and he said, why don't you come up and, and see us? And so we get in our car, we get ready to go. The phone rings again, we rush back in, and he said, my cousin said, you know, you guys, don't come. The, the police have barricaded the hillside. Oh, no. And when you look at the old Life magazines, you'll see these pictures of the kids going up the hillside, you know. Uh -huh. Well, that, that, they were trying to get to my cousin's house. That, that's what oh, that was all about. interesting. Phone encounter, at least. So prompted my soul to become a musician, entertainer, singer, guitar. Uh -huh. You know, I immediately got an electric guitar like the, the bird song. Get a, I got, got an electric guitar and learned how to play, you know. I, I got so excited, I immediately got into music at that point. So that, that was the so that impetus was the to get me into, into music. Wow. And uh, just on a footnote, my other cousin, uh, Michael Arciaga, was a uh, promoter for a William Morris agency in L.A., in Hollywood, and he promoted Gary Puckett in the Union Gap. What's his famous song, Gary Puckett in the Union Gap? Woman, get out of my Yeah, that's mind. right, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. I loved him. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. so cool. Was oh, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, my cousin came to me one day and said, Doug, get your music together. And it's all about promotion. In those days, it was all yeah, about promotion. Right. He says, that I'll make you famous and get, get your songs together. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm now, years later, I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? My family still asks, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Why I didn't take them up on it. How I'm making you famous oh, with yeah, the oh, Mini Wisdom right. Festival. Right. It's, you know why? Because you're an entrepreneur and you're independent in your own right. And that's what this show is all about. Is you know out there, folks, we're actually all independent entrepreneurs in the music world or the creative world or the entertainment world. And what happens to people like us is, we have to do everything ourselves and we just like to be ourselves and we don't want anybody telling us, hey, this is who you are, you sound like. No, we don't want that. We want to just be who we are and we have our own dreams. And that was probably how you felt because you continued to play, obviously, and had fun and went through your life doing lots of things in the entertainment realm anyway and enjoyed yes, your true. life that, anyway. That's a good point. That you kind of want it to come intrinsically from your own being that you're you're making it happen and it takes I guess especially when you're young it's hard to be humble and and accept the fact that someone else is going to do it for you is going to get you in instead of you just making your own way and maybe there's this autonomous independent spirit that you just want to make it happen yourself we can make it happen we can make it happen yeah. well I know when I was in London you know and I I did my high energy flow with the you know Ravel Foreman and the last man um, David Paramore the Who's publisher wanted to publish it and he gave me a contract because I went into his office and I actually performed it when I was like many years ago in really? 1982 yeah I put my put my record player on and the cassette players back then and I performed this thing in front of him and then he gave me um, a contract but and it was five cents a record and he was going to put me at the Wembley Stadium and 
And uh, anyway, he had this idea of who I was. And I wasn't any of those things. And I showed it to my brother, who at the time was running an international trucking business. Right. And he looks at my, the contract. I go, hey, what do you think about this, Buster? And he looks at the, the you know, his name's Brian, but we all call him Buster. And he, I said to him, what do you think about it? And he's looking at it. He says, well, I don't see what he's doing. He's not giving you much, you know, five cents a record. I'm like, well. But then when you, I found out later, that was pretty good. But anyway, the point is, my brother said, well, why can't you do it yourself? And that's what he said to me and I just went okay so and I'd already produced the songs I'd already carried this record this master record from one place to the right. factory right. I mean I did it all myself right. and I'd done my own logo for yeah, reproductions right, right, right. so that's began my idea of cooperatives my idea of independent performers gathering together and just being themselves and as a group. So as the years went on, I just went around the world. I brought myself out as the world's first metal rock motoring superstar out of Four Reef Stars International from UK right, bands, right. included co-op, toured to US bands in Santa Barbara, right. which I created, right. went to Aussie bands in Australia, mm -hmm. went on the radio there, went on the radio. You know, I just did it all myself. And right. sure, my audiences were very small at the beginning. You know, you might get 50, 100, 200. We ended up, I met Dan, we made As We Are our band, and we created mini Woodstock festivals every month in Santa right. Barbara. Yes, we got about 50 to 100 people, but we did it for seven years. Now we're doing our mini Woodstock television show. So it's taken years since 1978, but I've been doing my dream all this time. And has it taken lots of different jobs that I've had to do over the time? Sure, but it's my dream. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's I, like I do. And somebody it, it, takes over your dream. How can it be your dream? That's why I think everybody that's, point, that's because, famous because becomes it, it goes, alcoholics and becomes addicts. Yeah, it kind of goes along <laughs> with Shakespeare. And he said, to thine own self be true. That's my mum used to say and, that all the time. You, you know, really, it's better to be your own person on a lower level in, the, in society. I don't think it's even lower level. I think it's like this and that. Well, I mean hypothetical. Yeah, I mean, hypothetical, easy, easy, lower easy, level. Rather, I mean, rather you know, than being someone I else's person on a yeah. bigger, you know. Who are you? See, the Beatles, I love the Beatles, but they had to change. Yeah, they yeah. did have to change to be as famous as who they were. And then what ended up happening, they broke up anyway. So, you know, then the bands get, the Eagles, fantastic. But you listen to their story. Every story of a very, very famous very famous person. I mean, I'm, I'm, as inf I'm great because I'm well known, but I have so many personas that I could go anywhere I want. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I bet you're well known too, but no one's going to, they're not going to just like crash you. I had alias from Drop In here on the first show and he told, he's a bass player and he said, you know what, Ravel, I think about it. And he says, the way it used to be where you had a hundred bands, a million and what was it millions of fans now you have a, a million bands. million bands with a hundred fans and and so and that's kind of cool the way he looked at it and it's like it doesn't matter as long he said I love to be up there playing and if I can see that my music is taking people out to space and bringing them back that's my joy and I think that's what all musicians all performers yeah, all entertainers love yeah and what happens yeah. is when they get huge and big and big, whatever you like, and they can't walk along the street, they can't go anywhere. All of a sudden, that love that they had that was so beautiful, all of a sudden, a lot of them, it, it, it destroys them and it all becomes, okay, I've got to go to work, I've got to go to work, I've got to bring the money in, I've got to bring the money in. We all have to bring the money in, but how do we yeah, need to do it? You know, what is it that we really and truly love to do? And that's be ourselves. Well, that's what I think. And that's a good point. Because I, every Tuesday night, I go to this uh, pizza parlor, Gina's, in Camino Real Shopping Center, and I sing for two hours from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And Hang on. Did you hear that, everybody? If you want to see Doug, Gina's Pizza Parlor on Tuesday night. Yeah, in, right across from Home Depot, uh, next to oh, the theater there. And it's it's it good pizza and pasta. And I've been doing it for over almost a year now and you know sometimes I get 15, 17 people, sometimes five but the thing I notice in that kind of crowd is that I can interact with every one of those people. I go, go up to their tables, I sing to their kids, I do like twinkle twinkle jazz and scats and and I sing uh, Moon River and different things, Beatles songs. Um, 
and I'm, I'm with the people. I'm right there. It's not a big deal, but it's very interactive. It's very exciting. It's very enriching for me, and I impart my soul to other people. And like you said, on a smaller level, I think it's actually more enjoyable because you're in touch with, with millions of people. You know, you're, you're throwing it out there, but you can't see everybody. You're not with yeah. everybody. And, uh, that it's, uh, so a small group, when I was younger, I thought I had to have millions. And now a small group is, is nice. Because that is the way that you can actually interact with people. It's sort of, I've done comedy and stuff like that. And it's like you interact with people better that way. I've also done like 30,000, you know, festivals because... Um, you know, I've been in festivals where I've been a, one, a performer of many, and man, you never get, you can see the people on maybe the fourth row, <laughs> and you re it's like you're, you're really just involved with all the entertainers right. that you're with, right. and, it, and so, I don't know, it, it, it's all relative, I think, yeah. you know, it's all about you enjoying your art, Tell me you good. Um, are you married? Yes. Did you have children? Yes, I'm married. Okay, let's hear the story of that. Uh, I'm married with four children. Wow, that's a and nice lot. their ages are uh, 28. Mm -hmm. David, my son, he's a, like an engineer in Washington, D.C. And I wow. have a 25-year-old daughter, Carissa, and she's a nurse at the cottage and married and married to a policeman. And then I'm, uh, my son Daniel is 18 and he goes to Dos Pueblos. Oh, like just across the road. <laughs> Bye. 